are Lap reindeermen who live and work in the province of Lapland in Finland. Many hundreds of years ago, their ancestors came here and found wild reindeer, like these. Ever since, the Laps have built their lives around these animals. We'll find out how as we travel above the Arctic Circle today on part two of Discovery Goes to Finland. Discovery 66, the award-winning program for young people with Virginia Gibson. Welcome to Discovery. This is the village of Nunanen within the Arctic Circle in the part of Finland known as Lapland. Most of the people who live here belong to a few large Lap families. Most Laps are reindeermen and spend their working lives following their herds, leaving their wives and their smaller children in their permanent villages, like this one while they do their work even farther north than here, in areas they call reindeer villages. Yoni Nekalayarvi is a young Lap, a 13-year-old member of the race of people for whom this northern part of Finland is named. The Laps built their village here where the Arctic reindeer are found. All Lap boys have reindeer of their own. They are given one or more animals at the time of their birth, a traditional gift from their father and other members of the family. Then to mark special occasions as they grow up, more reindeer are added. Lapland is a beautiful, hard, open country where the reindeer thrive. It is partly in Russia, partly in Finland, partly in Norway, and partly in Sweden. It is that part of each country which is within the Arctic Circle. There aren't many people in Lapland, only an average of one person for every square mile. And in some areas, only one person for every four square miles. There are no roads on large areas of Lapland, and everything that moves must walk. One of the best walkers in the world is the Arctic reindeer, like this one Yoni is loading. This animal is a draft reindeer a half-domesticated creature who is kept around the house to pull sleds and carry packs, just as our horses and mules are used. A good draft reindeer can cover 70 miles a day over hard-packed snow and ice. They can carry a pack weighing 60 pounds and pull a sled with 300 pounds of weight piled on it. A lap can make himself a tent in about 20 minutes, which gives us some idea of how accustomed they are to moving about. This tent is called a lavu, and it's very simple and very temporary. It's made of reindeer hide stretched over birch limbs. This is Aslak Maga, and he's married to Yoni's cousin. It is from the men of Nunanen, like Aslak and Yoni's own father, that the boy will learn the reindeer trade that has provided his people with an occupation for centuries. Reindeer move in great herds, numbering as many as 15,000 head. These animals are raised for their meat and their hides. They spend most of the year in search of food, moving together as common protection against the wild animals which prey upon them. Their enemies are wolves and bears and wolverines. Reindeer drop their antlers every year and grow them back again in a few weeks. Each year, there is a new point on each antler until the animal is 10 years old. And then the antlers grow back smaller and smaller. Male reindeer can live to be about 20 years old and females 10 years longer. The reindeer is the horse and the cow, the donkey and the mule of the Lap people. Their meat is widely used in this part of the world, and their hides provide the Laps with shoes, boots, leggings, blankets, and tent coverings. Their antlers and bones are used for ornaments and buttons and knives. 
a herd this large would be the property of perhaps 10 prosperous reindeer men. This is the kind of country where the reindeer go during the summer months when they're set free and allowed to roam on their own. These low rounded mountains are called fells and they're said to be the oldest mountains in the world, worn down by tens of centuries of glacial activity. This is high country and it's covered with a milky green lichen called reindeer moss, the basic food of all reindeer. Lapland is famous for its autumn and in the Lapish language, the word for it is Ruska. In Lapland, the season of the changing colors is so beautiful that people travel great distances just to come and see it. The work of Yoni Nikolayavi's life will involve making the maximum use of the reindeer. The Laps are experts at making the most of the things they have. A case in point is the lap knife called a puko, which Yoni is using right now. With this instrument, a strong, sharp knife, the lap reindeerman conducts his trade. With it, he cuts the reindeer meat, cleans the hides, and works the bone and antler into things he needs and uses. For centuries, it has been the reindeerman's primary tool, the most valuable thing he takes with him when he goes after his reindeer herd in the fall and winter. Winter is long in Finland, and longest of all up here in Lapland. Winter lasts for seven months and more, and for five of those months there is continuous frost. The life of a Lap reindeerman, a life which Yoni will one day lead, is at its hardest in the winter time. We'll find out what it's like in just a minute. The life of a reindeer man is an outdoor life, and the comforts of living are not to be found. But to understand just how hard a reindeerman's lot can be, we have to know the Lapland winter and the journeys to the reindeer village during those long and snowy months. Winter is deep and hard in Lapland. When the cold months come to northern Finland, it's like a lid being nailed onto a box, a cover that won't be taken off again till the snow melts and the warm sun breaks through. But the most important reindeer roundup of all must be done in deepest winter. And when a reindeer man sets out on that journey, he will not see his family again for two or three months at a time. Sometimes the trip is longer if the reindeer are unusually spread out. Lap reindeer men get out their warmest clothing for the winter work. Coats, boots, and leggings, all made from the hide and hair of the animals they must look for and find in this frozen land. No matter how bad the weather is, the reindeer men must find their herds, round them up, and take care of them. In order for the reindeer man to separate his animals from the thousands they've been running with, he must be able to recognize them. There's a system of branding which is followed through all regions where laps herd reindeer. First, the reindeer men must lasso the young animals, identifying them by the ownership of the mothers who are nursing them. The animal's horns make a convenient target for a man with a lasso. Next, the animal must be brought to the ground and, with some help, held there. Then, with his knife, his puko, the reindeer man cuts the notches and marks into the animal's right ear. Each lap reindeer man has a brand, a marking all his own. These markings are registered in the log books of the Reindeer Man's Association, and nowhere in all of Lapland is a duplicate brand allowed. It's best for the animal if the branding is done before the weather turns cold, so that the ear has the advantage of good days for healing. Sometimes the weather catches up with the herd before the reindeer men do, but even then, there is a way to avoid ear notching in bad weather. A temporary brand is made in the young animal's coat. And then, when the weather is better, a permanent brand will be notched into his ear. But the branding, permanent or temporary, is done like everything else, with a lap's ever-present puko. 
Cold weather is no stranger to the Laps. This is the top of the world, and the Laps have lived here longer than anyone has ever been able to determine. Here within the Arctic Circle, where one third of Finland lies, these people have been moving for centuries, wherever their reindeer might happen to take them. Why have the Laps stayed so long alone, separated even from other citizens of their own country? Partly, it's the isolated nature of their work. Partly, it's their language, which is difficult and completely different from Finnish. And so the Laps remained alone, until now, when education has reached them, and made sure that no matter how distant their lonely and beautiful country may be, they will not be forgotten. For centuries, the Laps were unfamiliar with formal schooling. They carried on their education and their literature in another form, in song. The singer is a Lap reindeerman named Antti Rotsala, and he's famous in this area for the quality of his singing and the number of songs he knows. <laughs> the literature of Lapland has for centuries been sung. There's a biographical song for each person, and there are songs of history and joy, climate and landscape. The song he's singing now is a story of a young Norwegian Lap boy who wants to be a reindeer man. To prove his worth, he volunteers and goes ahead of the herd on the roughest landscape possible. Sometimes lap reindeer men will compete with each other. Lap songs are called yoiku. Since they are in part the Lap mythology, they were forbidden during the times when the Christians first came to Finland. The songs are difficult, and the rhythms are technically complicated. There are reindeer songs, and songs about the mountains, and the meadows, and the streams. There are probably more traditional Lap songs than there are Finnish Laps today. Official figures state that there are 3,100 Laps in Finland, no more. They're a very small group of people and a national population of four and a half million. But the Laps are a vivid people and they're important to Finland. Fortunately, there are people in this country dedicated to their best interests. And finally, they've begun to educate gifted people from their own community. Ola Nekalearvi is a lawyer, a recent graduate of the University of Helsinki. He has come back to Lapland, to the city of Rovinjemi, the province's capital, and he now works in the provincial government, specializing in lap affairs. What part do laps play in the life of modern Finland? And what role will a man like Ola Nekalearvi have in the future of his people? We'll find out more about that in just a minute. Ola Nekalearvi is a lap, and he's a lawyer. He's the first Finnish lap ever to attain higher academic degree. He was born in a tent, and he never saw a bicycle or heard a radio until he was seven years old. Now he leads a busy professional life in the city of Rovinjemi, 200 miles south of Enantekio. But from time to time, he returns on business or to see his family, or both. Yoni Nekalearvi is Ola's young cousin. When Ola was Yoni's age, his region was visited by government officials, none of whom were Laps, and many of whom weren't familiar with Lapland. Ola's father was determined that his son should be educated, and that he should put that learning to work to help his people. The mission which has brought Ola Nekalearvi to Enantekio district this time is both personal and professional. To begin with, there's a funeral the mother of one of the most widely known Antekio Lap families has died, and people from all over Lapland have come together for her memorial service. The center of Antekio's district is the church village of Hete. The church itself was built with American money, contributed to replace the original one destroyed during World War II.
After the funeral, Ola Nekaliarvi turns his attention to a problem which is facing local reindeer men. For years now, men from two areas have joined in one reindeer association. But the herd movement patterns have changed, and some of the members believe that they would all be better off if the organization were split into two smaller groups, groups with more in common. It's a delicate matter and needs careful handling. The young lawyer has great hopes for improving the future of his people in Lapland. He believes the reindeer meat can be better marketed through better administration. He wants to organize the weavers and the craftsmen so that they too can realize better return for their efforts. He wants to let his people know that if they should choose to come down into the parts of Finland where more people live, there will be a life waiting for them there too. One of the fields in which Laps may find employment has its beginnings in their own north country. 71% of Finland's usable land is forest covered. That's the highest percentage of timberland of any country in the world. In deepest reindeer country, forests cannot grow. But just a little further south, towards the Arctic Circle, slow-growing trees produce the finest raw materials of Finland's thriving wood, pulp, and paper industry. Trees are felled in the late winter so that they can be prepared as logs and allowed to dry before the next spring begins. Logging is easiest in the winter, when the marshes which cover this part of northern Finland are frozen over. In some places, the logs are dragged by horses, but most of the time nowadays, the work is done by tractors. The bark has been stripped from these logs and they have been cut into even lengths. Now they are piled along the river banks, waiting for the spring days when the ice melts and fills the streams and rivers which cover the north. When the rivers begin to rise, the logs are on their way south. The logs have been graded and notched according to quality. Along the way, they mingle without regard to origin or category. When they arrive, the markings will be red and the logs separated accordingly. The logs are sorted and each forest owner is credited at the southern end of the trip with the number of pieces he sent on the waters two or even three months before. In the largest sawmill in the world, the logs are cut into board lengths and then stacked for storage. The best logs are pine and spruce, but birch also grows in the north and is used to make paper pulp. In Finland, the forests provide the base for the national economy and the forest growth rate is the greatest in the world a fact which ensures future employment. There is a great amount of work here, and if they want it, it is waiting for young laps who are willing to come down a little way from the far north. What Ola Nekalayarvi does to inform his people of the possibilities open to them in and out of Lapland will pay dividends in the future for youngsters like Yoni. Yoni can remember when there wasn't a primary school for the younger children in Nunanen. There wasn't even a road leading into the village. Now he is almost a reindeer man. Some of the smaller children are laps like himself, and some of them are destined to become reindeer men with a herd of their own, followers of a lonely life away from the majority of their countrymen. For the moment, they must content themselves with playing a game of reindeering practicing with a lasso aimed at a pair of horns stuck in the ground. Young Yoni Nekaliarvi and his cousin Ola are two of those 3,100 Finnish Laps. They represent two ways of life in Lapland, the old way and a doorway to something newer. There's a saying that when two Laps consider a trip south, they ask one another, shall we make a trip to Finland? It's still a long way from one part of the country to another, 
But through the work of men like Ola, the distance will seem shorter for boys like Yoni. We'll be back in just a minute. We hope you've enjoyed the second part of Discovery's visit to Finland. Next week, Discovery travels to England with Kukla, Ollie, Beulah Witch, and Burr Tilstrom for a look at the swinging city of London. So be with us then. Bye-bye. The Discovery Production Unit's foreign transportation arrangements provided by Alitalia Airlines. This has been a Jewels Power production in association with ABC News and Public Affairs.